everybody. Today is Throwback Thursday, and we're going to throw it back to where <coughs> the streets of LJ were wide open. You had plenty of space. You drove like you wanted to. Most of the policemen knew you and liked you and kind of, you know. You knew everyone <laughs> by the car they drove. You could, I could see them way down the road and say, there comes so-and-so. Uh-huh. And today we're going to talk about some so-and-so cars that take us back because I've convinced you that Throwback Thursday means that you need to be here because you know more about throwing it back than most people. Yeah, I Can was we, there. Yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's admitting his age. Yeah. Can we throw it back to the days of 67 Fairlanes, 66 Chevelles, 64 Corvettes? Didn't you have a police officer who had a, no, a mayor who had a Corvette? Yeah. We had Henry Gartrell. He, he drove a shiny 63, 62 Corvette. Wow. Wow. How cool is that? Now, you're when, not a... When, uh, when Slim was in a cruiser with a Cobra jet. <laughs> that is true, people. That is very true. <laughs> that is true. And for anybody who has not been in this time zone and doesn't understand, this is Mr. Ella J. And he's Mr. Ella J. because he wrote a song about Ella J. Yes, I did. And it tells the truth, except for <clears throat> Jackie Dunn did not drive a 59. Jackie Dunn said, I didn't drive no 59 rag top. <laughs> and I go, I know, it was a 56 and it wasn't a rag top. But 56 didn't tickle as it rolled off your tongue. <laughs> So you changed it. So we had to change it for the song. <laughs> That's right. Plus, remember, we never let the truth stand in the way of a good story. <laughs> All right. Talk about good stories. We had an amazing Tuesday with two gentlemen. Oh, yeah. And they know a lot about the area. They know a lot about fast cars because Vic Davis was with Larry as they built some engines for yes. some of the race drivers around here. Yeah. Howard Neal in the strip teaser. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And and they still love being among people, and they really enjoyed doing the time we spent with them. Maybe what six, seven songs with them, and a little bit of talking, a little yeah. bit of visiting, and uh, just a good day. Just a really. I've good said day. it before, and now I'll say it again. It's uh, when you have those days where you don't feel like something. Look at Vic and Ed Forrester. Mm -hmm. There's you some inspiration. Yep. 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 They're in their high 80s and they're still doing it. Yeah, yeah. So that makes me want to get up and... <clears throat> Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you made the mistake about a month and a half ago of telling me about some of the fast drivers around town. Boy, we had a few. Yes, and I have asked you today to share a little bit about the best of the best, and maybe we'll do a tease with it, and then maybe we can encourage the best of the best to come and be with us one day. I don't know, but... Well, you reckon? I haven't seen him in years and years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's uh, it would be neat if he came by, wouldn't it? It would be really cool. It would be real neat. It would be really cool. Yeah, we would... Uh, well, there's just so many stories, but I remember... Back used to, in the back of the pool room, some of you older guys will remember this. They had the, the, the glass was uh, blacked out back there in the, in the back part, where you come in the front and you go over to the back part. There's a bunch of pool tables back there. Glass is blacked out back there. You couldn't see the streets and the street couldn't see in. And uh, we'd be back there shooting pool and hanging out in, in the days, Lord, I don't know. I might have been, I was 16 probably. And uh, I was 16. And uh, <clears throat> we always knew when a certain fella came by out front. And this, this here now, we, we're that about letting the truth stand in the way of a good story? No, this is the <laughs> truth. Okay. Oh, I won't tell you about things I heard about. I'll tell you things I saw. And I was there on this one. And uh, we'd be in the back of the pool room and we'd look at each other and there goes Ronnie Cantrell. <laughs> the it. windows would vibrate in the pool room, seriously. And it was 57 Ford with a Cleveland in it. And uh, I remember they, they cracked down, the city of LJ cracked down on loud mufflers. They'd uh -oh. do stuff every now and then, you know, they'd come mm -hmm. up with something like that. Mm -hmm. 
and they cracked down on it. And old Ronnie put quiet mufflers on his 5740 and he would still rattle the windows. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, uh, they got over that, and then he got back with his, with his regular mufflers. But uh, yeah, it was a heck of a story. Used to out at the Red Dot, uh, the Red Dot supermarket was at the north end of town out there, and uh, right before you cross the bridge on the left. On Old Five. On Old Five, yeah, Main Street. And uh, used to, I swear, it was. It was a, it, I call it a hard hat area out there, danger zone. Them boys would come out of there. I don't know who all of them were, but uh, it, it, was, it was a lot of them. David Sutherland, uh, there'd be Ronnie Cantrell and Eddie Holt and, and now, all Eddie these Holt. people, Mackie Pierce and, and Eddie Pierce and all those guys. They had cars that would fly and they'd come out of the red dot and, and they'd light that street up out through there, out going out toward Mr. P's. I mean, it, it, was, it was on fire out through there. Super B's, Chevelle's, Ford's, and they all, they all run, you know, and, and did this, that, and the other. None of them run like Ronnie Cantrell, and none of them drove like Ronnie Cantrell. <clears throat> he could get it done, buddy. Now, Eddie Holt is still in town. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And Ronnie is somewhere around, we hope. Yeah. Yeah. They're so still around. we're hoping that somebody will say, hey, I, I, I heard about y'all and we want y'all to tell us. I your know. Stories. Wouldn't it be good if, if, the, if the, so the two cool. of them came on oh the show? God, it'd be Boys, so cool. please come on the show. <laughs> please. Yeah. Please. You know, when you look back at those days as a kid, 16, did you have your license in? Yep. <clears throat> so did you learn from them? Because you don't drive fast. I learned. Uh, uh, a thing or two from them and other folks. You pick up a lot, you know, from, from watching people. I learned uh, don't try to drive like that because it's not going to work out good for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, then, you know, then you learn other things like when you go on TV, don't try to be funny. <laughs> it's never going to work. Did you tell, <laughs> did you tell your mama if you got a ticket, did you admit it to your mama? Did you ever get a speeding ticket? Did I ever get a <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel. I got more. In the year of 1972, I got 17 traffic violations. Oh, my God. None of them for DUI or anything like that, but it was, it was uh, just whatever, burning rubber or doing something, you know, and I'd, I'd clown around like that, but I never tried to go out 52 like Ronnie and them did. Because that was way out of my league. Them boys run 130 mile an hour out through there. 140. That's crazy. Yeah. Try that today and see what oh, happens. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. No, it never happened. And we are not encouraging anger and meanness and craziness in a car. Although, no. well, back in the day, it was cool. I know. You got nothing to worry about. Now cars won't run like no, that anymore. No, no, no. No, no, no. And uh, we used to go to the... Or they would, you know, that I was a little tag along. I was, like I said, I was 16, 17, and I might have weighed 110 pounds, maybe. I don't know if I had rocks in my pocket, I don't know. But they, them boys would all go out to the Dawson County line and drag race, and they had, uh, I've been out there many nights. I'd go, I'd, I was always a spectator. And uh, they'd race, everybody would. Terry Stanley, he's, not, he's no longer with us. He had a duster. A 70 Plymouth Duster with a 346 pack, it would it would run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, they'd all uh, they'd race, and what they do is they'd all race each other, and whoever won would race Ronnie Cantrell, <laughs> and then he was about to lose. Uh, you didn't beat Ronnie Cantrell. <laughs> yeah, that was over. It. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and uh, they was out there one night racing, and uh, a guy had a new Corvette with a 454 in it, I remember. And uh, he, he beat everybody else, and then he run Ronnie Cantrell. And Ronnie beat him. Uh-oh. With that Cleveland, yeah. Uh-oh. And, uh, and the guy wasn't happy. I forgot his name. I can't think of his name. But uh, he was real unhappy. Uh-oh. And he said that there was cheating, and he said something like that. He said he wanted to run again because something wasn't right. He wanted to run again. So Ronnie ran him again, and then Ronnie beat him worse that time than he did the first time. Uh-oh. Oh, he was very unhappy. <laughs> Not and, good. And uh, I'm, I'm just putting it lightly. Okay? Yeah, uh-oh, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, yeah. old uh, 
Oh, Ronnie was, boy, on that, he, he could drive them cars and he had cars that would run. And it was a sight. Well, yesterday we did a little visit back to 57 Heaven and we compared 396s, 390s, 351s, and you really love the 351 Clevelands. Yeah, I do. I love them. That's what Ronnie had in his 57. I'm going to put one in my 57, but it, I ain't going to try to drive. No, no. <laughs> I'm just going to lay real, <laughs> real low and be cool. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want to, uh, no. Yeah, we got, we got all of that up there. We got 396s. We got... Uh, 390 high performance GT engine. Tell me the guy who built that one. His name was uh, uh, Keith he? Keith White from Blue Ridge. Yeah, from Blue Ridge, and, and he's retired. I, it could I think it was about the last engine he built, and he he built the Cleveland as well. And uh, he assured me that they're going to get up and go pretty <laughs> good, <laughs> but not with me driving. I'm not. <laughs> now you told me that the the 351 Cleveland. And the 390 could beat the 396, is that well, right? Well, we had that conversation. Let me clear something up. It would depend on how they're put together, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, stock, I really don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I guess it'd be a close race between the, the 396 and the 390. Well, that, that 390 GT was strong as an ox back in the day. It'd be, it'd all depend on how they put together and what they had in them and that kind of thing. But uh, they they run close. But all of them would run close. Is that what you got your 17 tickets in? No, no. I was again. <laughs> I was just clowning around, being silly. You know, my car wasn't fast. No, don't never think I was in the league with those guys. Lord, no. I was way out of that league. Uh -uh. I would I would just jerk around, you know, and burn a little rubber and drive too fast and yep. show out around. But I didn't have anything to compare or even, you know, you couldn't put it in that category at all. And I sure couldn't drive like them guys. Well, I had a pickup and in three 30 days, I had three tickets. Mm. And I called my dear husband and I said, J.S., you need to sell this truck or you need to get some life insurance on me because this <laughs> truck keeps getting me in trouble. He said, get your foot out of the gas. Yeah. It's hard to do. Can't do that. When you have a 351 Cleveland under the hood, it is hard to do. So we sold that truck to keep me alive because yeah. I just, that sucker would fly. The Clevelands are strong engines. They what? Are, I mean, factory, they're strong engines. The one I've got up there has been tampered with a little, and it's it's supposed to be pretty strong for sure. But uh, And people say, I've heard people say the Clevelands have oiling issues. I don't know. I guess that's if you're turning 8,000 RPMs. I'm not going to be doing that. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be turning those kind of RPMs. Somebody said that on real high-end performance, they they have an oiling issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know. you got to do something to make that improved. I don't know about that. I'm just going to cruise around and listen to the to the lick it's hitting yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. be real cool. I'm not going to try to. Exciting. Like that. Now, we are going to share a little bit of the music with the boys, with Bobby and Vic. You're talking about my Davis brothers? Your Davis brothers. Boy, yeah. Ain't yeah. they something? They are. Folks, one of them's 88, the other one is 80, and they sing like birds. <laughs> that gives me encouragement. <laughs> it was precious. Maybe someday I'll get to where I can sing. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, all I got to do is live to be 110. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, something we're going to share today. You've met Evelyn, and Evelyn's from Peru, and she didn't know anything about canning or gardening. But this year she's learned, and thanks to you, you picked us a whole wad of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we canned tomatoes. And we're going to show you the video where I was teaching Evelyn to can. Well, we didn't show you all of it because right in the middle of starting to can, we found a little disaster we had to deal with at the house. And we started dealing with the disaster as we were canning tomatoes, but you're going to get to see a little bit of it. And I will tell you, we canned yellow tomatoes, we canned the beautiful red tomatoes, and um, they just did great until I realized that I had bought the bargain basement jars and jar lids, and I'm not going to name the Why store I bought it at. Stupid, because <clears throat> the other place didn't have any. You smack me. You can just smack me. I he picks the you. tomatoes and I ruin them. You I have to <clears throat> recan them because they didn't seal. They didn't seal. <clears throat> and I have to explain to Evelyn that we got to go back and we got to redo these tomatoes. Yeah. 
I was devastated. Well, but as long as you don't lose them. No, we're not going to lose them. They're in the fridge. Yeah. They're fine. But it just annoyed me to death. So if you're canning, watch where you buy your jars and your lids. Because these jars and lids, I'd never bought any at this place before. And I'll just say it's a discount store. I won't be discounting jar lids anymore. I've always used the ball, which is the original, either ball or curves. I always used either one of those. But when I got up and my tomatoes hadn't tinged and tinged and tinged and popped like they're supposed to, I was devastated. Yeah. So, yeah. Go with what you know. Go with what you know. So I blew it. <clears throat> but can we show that video of the um, what, what tomatoes? Is this? Oh, this okay, is yeah. Of, okay. Of I thought it was doing Rose. Okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to show these tomatoes. Yeah. And um, Trace, are you getting? Hey, y'all. Welcome to there Canon 101 or Steel Magnolia's teaching this beautiful Peruvian angel <laughs> to can. Now, yes. Miss Evelyn, are you excited? Yes. You're excited? <laughs> and we're going to can these beautiful tomatoes that were a gift and beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. Jars, oh, lids, yeah. and we have more, so you want to put them in there and let's wash them all because we're going to do them all. And be gentle with them. Be gentle, be gentle. And the cool thing about canning tomatoes is they're pretty easy and we can, we can blanch them, we can peel them, and then we can cold pack them, which is really, really cool. So it's going to be a method that um, is tried and true. And this winter when we're making soup, now Evelyn, you and I love soup, don't we? Huh? We I love, love soup. soup. Yep. And when I first took soup to the office, you kind of fell in love with my soup, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love soup. So we're going to do some soup. And we've got several different varieties of tomatoes and we're going to put them all together and see what happens. So we're going to take a break now when we get things ready and then we'll come back when we resume and we're going to be peeling tomatoes. Okay, Evelyn, what did we learn? How to can tomatoes. How to can <laughs> tomatoes, hot tamale. Yeah, <laughs> we got some. Really good. We got some hot peppers. We didn't put any in there. We've still got some tomatoes cooking. We did learn that a bunch of tomatoes makes just a few quarts yeah. because they cook down, don't they? Yeah. But we packed the jars really, really tight, and that's really, really a little cool. bit of a yellow one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a yellow one in there. And then look at these beautiful peppers. But that's what canning is all about. So this is our first lesson for you, Canning 101. We put the salt in it, and then we will, after we seal these jars, then we will cold pack it for a little bit. And then they'll be done. And then when winter comes, we will make soup. So what do you think? Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, guys, if you want a can, it is so simple, it is so easy. It's just a little labor of love. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes. and we'll be happy to help you with that. I need to show you honey. That's right. Oh, that's right. Hold on a minute. We'll do that. Hang on. <laughs> Let me go. Let me show you. Let me show you. Honey, this is the coolest honey. Oh, and it is that. absolutely gorgeous. If you're fighting allergies, this honey comes from the Blairsville area. A wonderful elderly gentleman does this, and it has the comb in it. And my oh, mama that. used to chew on the comb. Is that not the coolest thing ever? And again, it's just a labor of love. And that's what canning is. We're going to be preserving and putting up for the winter. Because according to statistics, we're going to have a tough winter. So. Oh, We'll do what we can do. There you go. All right, guys. Get yourself in your kitchen and do a little bit of canning 101. Join us again soon. Bye. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty cool. Hey, that was Canon 101 with a little disaster in the middle of it. You didn't get to see us processing, but we did it. <clears throat> and they're beautiful tomatoes. And again, thank you very much. You got a call that an elderly gentleman had some and yes, wanted to share his family. Let's, let's give a shout out here. Yeah. Willie Young, we thank you for the tomatoes, buddy. And Willie Young's a good guy. He's my good friend, too. They canned up beautifully, so but I do have to reseal them, so darn it. Okay, we're going to you and your boys and the train song because Vic said he loved that song. These are my guys. It's Vic's favorite song, and uh, it's about mine, too. I, I just love that song. All of my life, I've sung that little song, and boy, we sung it the other day. Now, them boys can sing, and they're 88 and 80? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does yeah. that mean someday I'm going to be able to sing? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, I'm not giving up. <clears throat> no, don't quit. No. You're, you're not a quitter. No. Let's let's go to the cabin atmosphere was perfect. Everything was good. 
There is a little bit of sound from the air conditioner. I did notice that, but we'll just ignore that. No fun intended? <coughs> no. That's cool. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, if, if we'd have been sitting there sweating and hot, y'all wouldn't have enjoyed the music either. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't like even this. like my attitude. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not that you do it at all. Anyway. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the Sweet Boys. And, again, we posted this <clears throat> on YouTube so everybody could enjoy it because Bobby lives over in Rome where we don't have ETC services, which is kind of sad if you've just moved to the area. Pick your house based on ETC services. Make sure you buy a house that has our Wi-Fi, our security, our phones. Is that not right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Local people <coughs> serving local people. That's it. That's this it. This don't go, the money don't go way off somewhere. It stays right here in town. That's it. That's the best part. That's it. That's it. So here we go to the Davis Brothers and... Mr. Sanford leading the group with his guitar picking. And you know, people are going to be calling in a squalling. You know why? Where's your guitar, Dwight? I left it at home. I figure with this video lady here, the lady with the camera, <laughs> we should have plenty to pull from. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> now, let's sing a train song. You got one in mind? Yeah, give me a key. Life is like a mountain We did. Yeah. You did. You did. You did. There, never, never, ever think that I did any of this. Well, I was talking I about there, the Davis boys. Yes, well, I we, sit there with the camera. <clears throat> Y'all did great. You know what my favorite, and I don't know if you watched the show the other day, but I talked about the song that they didn't know that your grandfather used to sing. Oh, no, they said they'd never heard it. My favorite out of everything you did that day, that was the best. That was the best. Now, how did that song come back to your mind from a child? Uh, well, I've sung it a lot. Me and Margie sing that song. Okay. And, uh, and my cousin Sherry. Yay. We sing it too, but, uh, we, 
we need to, I want to get it recorded. That was we really actually good. have it recorded <clears throat> in the studio. I want to get a video of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good, uh, good song. That's just a real good song. My, my grandpa sang it all the time. That was his favorite. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. And I could just see him standing up there in a, in a brown suit. Yep. Yeah. William, William David Sanford, W.D. Bill, some call him. And I thought he was eight feet tall at least. <laughs> And he was five six. <laughs> oh my God! I have his driver's license. He was five six. <laughs> I thought he was at least eight. That's crazy. Ain't that funny how that works? That's crazy. All right. Well, we've got to do a little bragging rights today because we have this new grandbaby, and I'm so <clears> proud <throat> y'all like her name because there was a lot of talk about this name. So we're going to show some pictures and we're going to share a little bit of music written by Susan Liebert who brought me the CD, and we're going to share a few of the baby photos. So y'all will get to see the baby. You'll get to hear a little bit of Susan's music. And I can tell you that right now, um, motherhood is one of those things that it's like, oh, it's not like a puppy. you got to take care of it all the time. So, so we're learning <coughs> as, as we go. It's, it's a new thing. Um, she is absolutely beautiful. She's healthy. And that's what matters. She is a healthy, healthy baby. And thank you for everybody's prayers. And is that not the cutest little thing? And <clears throat> they made a wise decision. They brought her home in the outfit that I bought because, you know, you always try to make Granny happy. And so Granny was pretty happy when they put that little outfit on her. Look at that hair. Y'all, look at that hair. She needs a haircut and she was br brand new. So she is, uh, she's something else. Her name is Zanna Jordan and, um, wide-eyed and alert and just precious as she can be and we are very thankful for her and we are very thankful <clears throat> for all your prayers is that not cute 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 and uh, i just hope she grows up to be a sweet little girl not a holy terror all right we're going to show some photos now that you know I'll do just about anything you request that's within limits. If you say dig a ditch, I'd dig a ditch. If you say can a tomato, I'd can a tomato, because you do things for me. We kind of swap out. You work, I work, we both get it done. But I got greasy yesterday for you. Won't hurt you. That is not something I normally would do. Won't hurt you a bit. I don't know that I got all the grease off my hands. Yeah. I washed and washed and washed. But you have projects. You got a project and a project and a project, and you got them all going at one time. Can I tell one? Yes. I have a set of artillery wheels that mm -hmm. my friend Vic Davis gave to me, and they needed sandblasting, so you took them down for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. It made sense you was going by there anyway. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need something to hold them with. Oh, no, you won't get any grease on you. <laughs> I was greasy and nasty, and the wheels were greasy and nasty, but I said I'm so glad they didn't video it because I'm trying not to lift a whole lot of heavy stuff yet because it's four weeks from surgery, so the doctor said up to three months. I could have some issues, so I'm being really, really careful. I get there to unload the wheels well, the place is closed, and nobody's there. Mm. So, so if I'm, anything tears loose, <laughs> it's going to be my fault, right? <laughs> Your fault. Okay. So I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the wheels that he has loaded, and I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? So I roll one down out of the car, and I roll it to the door, and then I roll another one, and then I think, I believe I can roll this two at a time. Work, yeah. <laughs> I believe I can roll two at a time. Well, they roll through the sand and they get sand all over them. And I'm thinking, he's going to kill me because I got, and I thought, no, he won't because they're going to sandblast them. They're going to be sandblasted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, I thought of that. See, sand <laughs> yeah. and sandblasting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and so I got them there, but it was cool because I picked up the first one and you had said they were a little bit heavy. So I picked it up and I thought, I don't know, because the doctor said don't lift, lift anything heavier than a gallon of milk. It's okay. And in reality, they probably weighed about the same thing a gallon of milk did. But I thought I'd roll them. And then I looked around behind me to make sure nobody was videoing because it was I pretty I wish they stupid. had been, and then you'd know what it's like to get videoed <laughs> when you weren't really thinking about getting videoed. I know it. I know it. <laughs> it was so funny because I just kept looking around behind me. If there I'd have thought, I'd have went down there and videoed it. <laughs> I know you would. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. But yesterday, you allowed the camera to capture you in your element. Because that's what 57 Heaven is. In the song it says about Ella J, it's a mighty fine place to be. 
57 Heaven is a mighty fine place to be too, folks. I love hanging out there. I got my stereo system. I got the Beatles on the stereo system. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my work. I'm studying. I'm making plans and getting stuff done. Yep, yep. And I invaded his privacy yesterday and we got to share some engines and we're going to do probably five to seven minutes of that <clears throat> because you're going to show it here you, just you a little bit put it on here today mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah just okay. a little bit because i think right. it'll be cool and i love the progress because i don't think people understand a frame off restoration you're showing them the whole frame yeah but you didn't show them that it was put together piece by piece and i want you to share a little bit about that i will elaborate <clears throat> Down south of here, at the place we will not mention, right. we have a mystery guy. Right. And he, uh, he is working on a 57 Ford Fairlane right now. And it's coming together. Last time I was down there, it was really coming together. So pretty soon, you're going to see this Fairlane being set back on the rails with a 390 in it. And it, when it's all over, it's going to be yellow and black. Remember who told you that? Because someday it'll be where? On the streets of L.A.J. <laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> it's exciting. Now, I didn't see the improved pictures that you took last week. I don't think you yeah, sent them to me yet. To no. Yeah. But what stage is it at right now? It's on the rotisserie, and it's a... Uh, it's solid, the metal is all in place. We put new floors, we, he put new <laughs> floors in it. And uh, it's, uh, it's coming together, it's really, really, pretty soon, he's already got some, what do you call that? Epoxy primer here and there. Mm -hmm. And it's shaping up, starting to look just like a car. And uh, it's a, uh, you know, it'll be, won't be long now, it won't be too long, I need to get moving. I gotta get that motor in that chassis and the stuff done, I gotta, I gotta run the brake lines, new brake lines I got that's pre-bent, and gas lines and all that goes on the chassis and then the motor will set in, and then it'll be hauled down there and, and, and the body will set back on the chassis. We've already bought, I've already bought the, uh, what's called the mounting kit and all that stuff, it's gonna fall right in place. It'll go pretty fast now, it really will. Especially with me, when this weather cools down, I get full of energy and I start doing lots of things. Now, was this the car that came out of Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. Came from Arizona. And how did you find that on the internet? No, it's a long story. Uh, a guy got it here from Arizona. Okay. And then I bought it from him. And how long had you been looking for that particular car since your daddy had one? Yeah, I'd, I'd always, I'd always wanted a uh, one of these fair lanes. And uh, I'd, I'd told people, my, my, my buddy and cousin, Wilburn D4, I used to tell him, he's got you 57 Ford, he's got a nice one. Yeah. And I'd always tell him, someday, someday I'm gonna have a 57 Ford, I'd tell him that. Yeah. And he'd and go, well, yeah, and one, then one of these days, two. and next thing anybody knew, I got three. I thought there was four, isn't there another one sitting well, out one, there near yeah, the John Deere? one's a parts yeah. car, yeah. yeah. I got one parts car four. and three cars that are actually one of them's already running and uh, y'all yep. know candy the red and white we named her candy because of candy cane mm -hmm. and uh got two more coming right now and uh candy was the reason that <clears throat> I, I always associate hot rod cars with loud engines and mufflers and yours candy's not like that at all she's just a driving car well, Just Candy's got flow masters on her. She's if you get behind her, she's pretty loud, I guess. I don't know. Well, from that not not no three ninety six no, loud. No, from that day, <laughs> your vision went from finishing Candy to now finishing a sixty six Super Sport one thirty eight matching numbers car that you have in your possession. You're working on working on your baby. I I will just name her your Folks. baby. Everybody knows I love Fords, I do, I really do, and I love 57 Fords, and I don't love them any less than I did. But I've got the 50, I mean the, uh, the 66 Super Sport now. That's my favorite, that's the car, okay? <laughs> yeah. That car, there's a song that says, and the rock and roll would play in that old silver Chevrolet. When AM rock was all we knew back then, that's the car right there. Yep. I'm singing about this car. You're going to paint her silver? Probably have to. Yep. 
Yeah, yep. I probably have to. What color interior did your car have? Black. Yep. 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 Got all of that. I've yep. already got some seats to upholstery right now in that car. It's it's going to be it's going to be a while on this, but Lord, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. So we're going to warn you for you guys who are looking for a '66 Chevelle. You ain't going to get this one because he he said yesterday he would sell your Merle Haggard guitar. You you name things that I'm like, has he lost his yeah. mind? <laughs> I'll sell the '57 if things get but rough and I need to sell something to make this happen. I'll sell the '57. <laughs> I'll sell the Tough Dog Telly. I can't I'll believe I'll sell it. whatever. But we're not selling the 66. That's Somebody amazing. will be selling that after I'm out of Crossroads. <laughs> That's crazy. <clears throat> All right, we're going to show you just a few minutes of yesterday's um, fun and um, fun and fantasy because it's 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 a fantasy for guys who've never had a 390. It's a fantasy for kids who don't know what a 351 Cleveland will do. You do. You you oh. live that life. You know yes. it. Yeah, thanks to Ronnie Cantrell, you live that yeah, life. I didn't have one in those days, but <laughs> yeah. I can tell you what they'll do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to go now to a little bit of 57 Heaven, and we're comparing 390s, 351s, and 396s. My choice was always a 396. He shot me down when he said two of these engines might beat a 396. Well, again, it would depend on how they're put together. Yep. Yep. You know. And you have some pretty good engine builders, so they're really put together. Yes. Here. I got a guy up on Rock Creek that's going to build his 396. And his name might be? He, well, I won't tell you his name, but his initials is Ronnie Harrington. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. I shared the video with Rhonda last night. So yeah. <laughs> did, because I knew you were talking about yeah. your daddy. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, Ronnie's the engine guy. Here we are. He, he is the engine guy. Here Can we go. Can you still go. hear us talking? Yeah. Welcome back to, what do you see there? F-O-R-D, 57 Heaven. We are back in 57 Heaven, and we're waiting on the man himself to come and talk to us, Mr. Dwight Sanford, also known as Mr. Ella J. I really think he ought to be known as 351 Cleveland. I may change his name. So here we go. Thanks for showing up today. A little late, but you're here. Yeah, I made it finally. <laughs> Better late than not at all. Here's <laughs> what's going on with the stuff. We've been on this custom, and... Uh, <laughs> We've been on this custom, and it's uh, so we got some stuff going on. I can't find the transmission I want, so we're gonna come off of it for a while. We're gonna go over here to this uh, uh, Fairlane car. Mm -hmm. Here is a 390 GT high performance engine built, ready to go. Gonna be sitting in there, fixing to set it in there actually, just about any day. And uh, I got some brake lines I want to run. The reason I'm coming off of that over there is I'm about to put the Cleveland, I've about decided to put the Cleveland in that fella right there. God, I'm so happy. It's That's over awesome. here. We yep. should have had it uncovered, yep. but I forgot again. Yep. And, uh... Could I say I see a fender over there that I recognize? Yeah, it looks familiar, doesn't it? It does. What and, about uh, that? I don't know. So we're going to... I got to get the brake lines run. I got new brake lines, new gas lines, I'm gonna get them run on this. Set the engine and transmission in this chassis. Mm -hmm. Be ready for uh, when the body shop calls, cause things are moving pretty fast down there. I was down there the other day, it's the body shop that we will not mention. Secret agent. And, uh, but I want this to be ready when he hollers, you know, I want to be, yep, ready to go, take it down there and we set the body back on the chassis instead of, you know, getting things held up. So we're going to focus on this thing, and uh, it's coming together. It's Can coming you together. remind folks exactly why you're doing this car, the memory? Oh, yeah, my daddy had one of these. It's going to be black and yellow, and, uh, yeah, it's like in the other video. It's the first car I ever drove. I was 13, and he would let me drive it up to, with him, that is. <laughs> Did daddy's have a 390? No, it was stock. Okay. But, uh, we drive, I would, he'd let me drive up to meet the bus there Exciting. at Crossroads Cemetery every, every morning. Now, you kind of broke my heart because you said this 390 would whip a 396. Well, I don't know that. It depends on how they're put together, you know, but it, it's possible. I'm telling you, these motors, they were strong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this one's got some stuff in it. it. It may be a job for the 396 to ever touch this. I and don't know. And what years did Ford produce these engines? I, uh, I think... These were, let's see, 390. I think they started making them in 62. 
and they, gosh, they run way on up into the 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this, of course, again, is the GT engine. And it come out of a 66 Fairlane GT. Were these used in NASCAR at all, in racing? I don't think so. Yeah. No, I think they just did. Now, I don't know much about racing, but I think they just use small blocks. Which blows my mind. You don't, you're not a race yeah. fan. Now, let's look at this build that was a frame-off restoration. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this, I'm in awe of these springs. <laughs> That's a big spring. Yeah, it's longer than the, than the custom Ford. Mm -hmm. This is a fair lane. It's nine inches longer than mm -hmm. what that one is. Mm -hmm. And it's just a top-of-the-line car. You know, it had all the bells and whistles. That one had nothing. That car came with a six-cylinder engine. Wow. This came with a V8 automatic. A lot of them came with air. Some of them come with, a, what do you call it, turbocharged or something they call it. Is this an air car? No, it's not. No. And you're going to go back as close to original as possible? Pretty much, you know. Of course, this, this engine's not original, but mm -hmm. it's pretty much. It was an automatic car, and this is going to be automatic. And it's uh, what's going on at 57 Heaven today. I'm getting ready to set this engine in. That's impressive. This this engine kind of caught my eye when I walked in the door. I was like, ooh, yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Now, what does it take to build an engine? A lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of doing. Uh, Timing and... I like them apples. <laughs> I love them apples. <laughs> That's a... Uh... So you have an engine builder? Hello. I'm doing good, how are you? Yeah. Yeah, is that okay? Well, we'll just, if it's all right, we'll just set them out there somewhere. It's old, old set of artilleries. That was a little tease of that, that is truly 57 heaven, and it is your place of peace, your place of calmness, your place of when things get stressful, you just go there and work on cars. So the complete video is on YouTube, and you can catch that. You can watch that. It's about 18 minutes long. It's fun, and at the end, he makes me look just dumber than a flat rock. Really, really stupid. Can you explain what happened to me yesterday? I did that. <laughs> on numerous occasions. Are you sure you don't have me confused with somebody else? <laughs> oh, no, it's you. <laughs> huh. Yeah. You pick stuff that you know I don't know because I'm an old school Kitty Wells, Connie Smith, Dottie West, and then you pick oh. this stuff that you know I'm stupid <clears throat> about. Yeah. It's when you asked me who my favorite guitar player was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember that now. That uh -huh. was me, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And that was you yesterday. When you said all of America, all of the world is laughing because it's ZZ Top. Is that what you said yeah. to me? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you throw it out there and I take it. I gave it. hints. I gave hints. Three hints. I said, how, how, how. And she didn't get that. <laughs> so then I said, the little old band from Texas. Well, she didn't know who that was either. <laughs> nope. And we finally, I said, ZZ Top. Then she had it. I knew then that some weirdos and Angela used to listen to. So. <laughs> <laughs> but truly, I need to get you and Bill Senior hooked up because y'all could do the rock and roll trivia. I don't know any I'm of that I'm afraid stuff. I'll get on TV and he'll beat me. Oh, he won't and beat And make you. me look real. No, no. Even dumber than I no, already no. look. And that's, no, no. that's pretty bad right now. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it was so funny because I had no clue who you were talking about. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's talking about, but if he don't shut up, <laughs> yeah. I thought he's going to make me look stupid. Well, it worked. Yeah. It worked. Well, I could make another joke, but I'll just let it go. He's going to let it go. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to now the Davis Brothers. Once again, at the cabin, uh, perfect setting, everything was really cool, and we spent some time with them. And we want to share a little bit of that trip. It was, uh, you know, Bobby came over from Rome. He was taking care of his 90-something-year-old sister the night before and just, you know, sharing how she helped him when he was a little boy and what, what an honor it is to be there for her now. And I thought that was really, really cool because those, those guys have a close-knit family, and they're just good guys. They're just good guys. So we're going to go back now to the cabin and a little bit of music and a little bit of laughter from the Davis Brothers and Mr. Ella J. sing it at home. 
home and daddy go. <coughs> Fresh um, eagle memories have. Yeah. He'd do the bass line, he'd walk yeah. it up there. Uh, Precious mem memories have. And I would roll in the floor yeah. laughing. I don't know why I laughed at him. <laughs> it tickled me to death for him to sing bass. He thought that was good. good. Yeah. You know something we need to do right now? What's that? We need to thank these gentlemen for what they've done today. All right. What does this Bobby, mean? What does it I mean to you? Yeah. I, what does I, it mean I, to you? I've enjoyed every minute. I what need a pleasure. to pay y'all. Thank you, old lady. I, I appreciate it. I need thank to, you very I much. I need to pay y'all. Yeah, go ahead. Write the check. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sherry. Just yeah, make it out to me. This is, this is so precious. Host. This this is just such a precious, precious memory. And how appropriate to leave with that song. That's the truth. Because when we think about our history together, the many years in television, and now, you know, I don't know if you know it, but pretty soon you'll be 90 years old. We're going to two more years, and we're going to celebrate your 90th birthday. Uh, and what an honor to have been part of today. And uh, Dwight, if thank you. If he don't get my truck to run it. If he don't get it to work, he ain't going to make it to 90. I'll, I'll bet if I don't get that truck to run it, I'm out of the picture. <laughs> All pictures. Yeah, There'll be yeah, no yeah. birthday party if you don't get the truck to go in. Yeah, no no yeah. berry pie. Or no, nothing, nothing. None of that. Well, it was important to Dwight to make this happen, and thank you very much for doing that, because this just, he just had a heart for wanting to put y'all together, and it's perfect. This has been a perfect well, afternoon. That's well, great. Perfect I'll tell you afternoon. what, this is the most I've sung ever. I, I've never sung to amount to anything. Well, I've never sure considered did. myself a singer. I was, I really, in, in my music playing, most of the time I was in the background playing, trying to play the steel or bass, and I just, well, I never have considered myself a singer. Well, today you faked it pretty good. Uh, you you yeah, did a great well, job. For today, yeah. I guess, and I have in the last 20 years. I heard you right <laughs> cutting around in there on them seven uh -huh. notes. Seventh yep. notes. Yep, yep, that's yep, know-how. Yep. That's know-how. Yep, you can't it. do that that's if you it. don't know how. And you know what we're sharing today is what ETC was built on. It was built on neighbors serving neighbors and communities from Ballground to Turtle Town, and that's what it's about. You know, it's about the music that came out of these mountains. Oh, it's uh, it's, it's amazing how much talent there is in this North Georgia mountain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank God. He's one of the best, of course, but uh, yeah. well, I think you'll yeah. agree with me. There's plenty of talent around. Yeah. You can tell a few more like that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He I might buy you a steak instead of a suit. We might go ahead and do that birthday party anyway. <laughs> you know, some of the, really some of the some of the greatest talents that we've ever seen is people like Dolly Parton and Loretta Lynn mm -hmm. that grew up. Came out of mountains. Just poor. But that's what they had. Yep. They had music, mm -hmm. yeah. and they they had a good ear for music. Well, and wasn't it about like that with y'all? It was. It was with yeah. me. I didn't yeah. have anything. No, I had my guitar. Mm -hmm. I didn't have yeah. anything else. Yeah. Our daddy yeah. played the fiddle. And Vic played. Uh, I don't know what you were playing back then. He played steel guitar, violin, or fiddle, and I don't know what else. Mandolin. I used to, when I was younger, I played a little bit. I wasn't never good. My two best instruments, if you can even call them best, was a bass and a steel guitar, I guess. But I, I could play some guitar, mandolin, but now my fingers don't work. So, <laughs> And I never did. That's some way Wow, what about I that? I was left-handed, and I thought, well, I'm left-handed. I won't be able to play. And I, and I what you know, when you think mm -hmm. you won't be able to do something, you probably won't. Right, right, you know, right. That's yeah. what the teachers used to tell us. Uh, what is it? If you can't, think you can't, can't you can't. Do, didn't do anything. That's yeah. right, yep. Yeah. Let yep. me tell yep. a little bit about this guitar for me. All right. This guitar is a 1982 Alvarez Yari. Mm -hmm. My buddy, David Watkins, we were in Ruby, Miss, little Miss Ruby Pinson's classroom one day. And he turned around and started talking to me. We've been best friends ever since. If I have a friend in this world, it's David Watkins. In 2013, David brought me this guitar and he gave it to me. He said, here, I want this to be somewhere where it's going to be used. This is old Al, David. 
This is Al right How here. precious I'm, is I that? I use him for funerals and stuff like this right here mm -hmm. and record him. Mm -hmm. And uh, old David's a good boy. He's a yeah. good boy. Yeah. You know, and while we're talking about uh, playing, uh, both of our grandfathers, we never saw them, but I understand they both played fiddles. Yeah. Uh, Daddy played the fiddle, a pretty good old time, hold down fiddler. And and all of us, all six of us, but our two sisters played enough yeah. for their own enjoyment on the guitar. And uh, all of us were Bobby. <laughs> While I was throwing it out, he, he made up for it and sang it. I mean, it, uh, he used to Bobby is. I'll tell you behind his back, I'll tell him he's, one, he's, a, he's a good singer. Exactly. Well, y'all look at music today. What we've created here today is what started the music oh, industry. Yeah. And it was families sitting on porches. It was friends yeah. gathering together. And it was one of them who had one talent, one who had another talent. And then you combine that effort, and it's amazing. You know, it's like the song that Dwight did that his granddaddy did in church. That's something that just, that'll be a memory forever for everybody who that hears that. What, what's sad to me I'm 80 and I've sung in choirs and groups for 54 years. And what's sad is the writers now that sing in choir songs, they're writing harmony out. You might have two parts in there and the rest of it's unison. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've always said four part harmony Don't wasn't get any created better. by man, God. You're exactly God right. created yeah. for I have honor. said the same thing all my life. And yeah. what, back years ago when I sung in quartets and me and the boys would sing and go stop at a restaurant somewhere, crack a barrel or whatever and eat, we would start singing. And when people, they could, they could be all kind of noise in that place, but when they heard harmony, yeah. When they heard harmony, it soul. got as quiet as yeah. your pen drop. Yeah, mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So harmony, harmony, harmony goes with the ear. Well, I won't tell you this. I came someplace one time where y'all were singing. And what was the name? It was the Davis Trio. Mm -hmm. Talk about some singing, folks. Him and his two sons, is that what it is? Yeah. Talk about tied harmony. Good singing. Today is just an example of some of that. Them boys nailed it. Now they, they really had it going on. I tell you, I enjoyed it. I've said this several times. Uh, Any time I've been to two or three of the concerts, and uh, if you if you didn't feel a little something, oh, it was gosh. a hard joke. Go ahead and call the Undertaker because you're say dead. That <laughs> I know I'm biased because we're founded, but they were good. Well, y'all, well, thank you so much for doing this today. And um, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it. You've got a little surgery coming up. We're going to put you on a prayer list. And once you get healthy, wealthy, and wise, well, then we'll be back and we'll do it again. We sure will. We sure, we sure will. will. We'll so let's cabin. make plans. We'll do Actually, it again. I, like that. Well, you moved over there. I, like I do too. So I like this. I'm All right. Glad, I'm glad I thought of that. I am too. I'm so glad you're so Set smart. <laughs> We charge a little for that. Well, I, I, I need it bad. I'll All right, here we see. go. That's how we make it. Would it be right? Would it be right? Okay, here we go. We are back. I hope you guys enjoyed the Davis Brothers and Mr. LJ. And he's doing a shock treatment right now because he realized that the, the hat covers up your head but it also covers up, it shadows you. And so you've admitted that you're old and you've admitted that you're getting older, but you, we just, hope. you just admitted something to me. I didn't know you wrote that song in 1992. Wrote Welcome to Ella J in 1992. I've told this before, I was sitting up on the mountain, you know. You told me you were sitting there, but you didn't tell me what year. It's 1992, cold, cold that night. And uh, out of the ordinary cold. And I sat there and wrote 90 miles north of Atlanta where the Kusawati lay. And it took you how long to record it? I recorded that song in 2015. What were you waiting on? Well, one thing is I didn't have anything to record it with in 92, <laughs> to my defense. Okay. Yeah. All it right. was later on I got all this recording gear. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Because you are a, I'm going to say it and I hope you don't slap me, 
He's a control freak. He loves everything to be perfect, everything. So I do not see you walking in a studio and telling somebody else to record your stuff. No, they couldn't. We actually tried <laughs> that. Yeah. It didn't go good. No, it didn't go they good. They were bragging, oh, this guy's from Florida. He's played with Billy Ray Cyrus. And, and they, they, all these guys were good. And we got in there and I said, fellas, sorry. <laughs> this ain't happening. <laughs> not going to work. No. So you truly recorded everything yourself and pulled it together, mastered it, produced it, edited it. You did it all. Yes, I did. Yep. I surely did. You know what and you I'm got? happy with it. I'm mm -hmm. happy with it. So I, I look to back say. and I listen and I go, now that's the way you do it. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. And if you would like to get a copy of his CDs, pick up the phone and call me. Or if you'd like to pre-order or get an order, I can't wait to show you the t-shirts. They're really, really cool, and if you are an LJ native and you love these apples, you will certainly want one of these shirts. They are, um, they're cool apple shirts, yeah. really cool. So, so we're gonna have those in a few weeks. Uh, today was throwing it back a long way. I hope, I hope Ronnie Cantrell, I hope Eddie Holt, I hope some of them wild and crazy drivers yeah. will contact you and you let's boys? get them on here. Yeah, you boys, yeah. come on in, come on in. Yeah. People love these old stories. Yeah, like they this. do. I don't know if yeah. people do, but boy, I sure do. <laughs> no, people do. They I do, hear from yeah. Them. yeah. And it's about these mountains will never be the way it was. I'm looking at this waterfall. You know, you can't even go places like this anymore without 50 people following you. You know, well, there's no, there's nowhere that you can hide away except the camp. Yeah. There is a place you can hide There's a place hide called away. the camp. Yeah, yeah. We, that and is And some hideaway. folks drag out <coughs> 19 and a half inch rainbow trout out of the camp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got this friend and cousin, we're actually cousins, it, it goes away, it's way down the stream, uh, but uh, M.H. Sanford went out to the camp and caught a 19 and a half inch rainbow trout. Huge. Hey, like me now, M.H. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something else. Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe beautiful, it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, if you <laughs> have some old timey pears, I'm looking for some. I've got two trees. Uh, Narrow it down and I'm going to get those, but I need more because making pear relish is like every other year. So if you have old timey pears, please get in touch with me. Everybody knows my phone number. It's 404-375-0590. Would you look at that clock right up there? Can Ain't it funny how time slips away? Time slipped away. Thank you for being here again today. Well, thank you for having me. It's Throwback Thursday. It's the Mr. Yeah. LJ Show. Yes. So uh, he's got the stories, he's got the time, and he's got the talent. And I hope you will pick up one of his CDs. <coughs> and I hope you will get out to the Georgia Mountain Fair and enjoy every single minute of it. That is what these, these, these mountains are full of music, full of memories, and you need to get out there and make some. Pick out a dirt road path today and just travel it in safety, in joy, and um, do something that's fun with somebody you love. Get out there and do something fun. I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all.